Okay, are we making this a different sh thing, or are we calling this uh, just putting it in the unsub feed with the other stuff? On the what feed? There's two. There's uh, renamed all political, like anything controversial, the unsub show. Mm. Um, you named it that instead of uh, "Don't Kill the Messenger." <laughs> Well, that's what I'm saying. We can make it a different show series, or we can continue in that line. I don't care which. Do, do you want to make these separate, or do you want to go with that? I don't know. I mean, I would like to continue this as a series, but not sure the name. Maybe let's do the show and see if any name stands out. Okay. All right. What do you want to start with? You were saying GOP, I got a bunch of Occupy stuff in here. I'm fine with starting with whatever. It's anything's fair game as far as I'm concerned. Hmm. Alright, well, let, let's talk a bit about that anyone realistically has a fair chance of beating Obama. Uh, unless, of course, whoever wins the primary is an ultra, ultra conservative, in which case they'll alienate independent voters about as much as ultra liberals and <laughs> incumbents would. So, <laughs> that's, in which case it's a split vote situation. <laughs> I, I don't know how that's going to wind up shaking out. That's. So you think it's pretty much decided that it's just going to be Obama again next term? I, I'd say at this point it's 50-50. Uh, Obama's got a lot running against him. Yeah. But on the same token, let's face it, about 40% plus of the country are neither conservative or liberal. They're independents. And most of the independents don't like the extremist ultra conservative. They're like, well, I can't see myself going for somebody who wants to make abortion illegal or going for somebody who wants to criminalize immigration problems because we have a or, or so on or so on and so forth. You know, there's a, there's a bunch of core conservative values that will win someone the primary but lose someone the election. Uh, and and so forth. It's yeah. like it's like. Well, I don't really want to vote for Obama, but I want to vote against this guy. That's like, is the situation was I can see a lot I, of voters being in. Was it you that were talking about that, or did I read this somewhere else that you know the GOP people they tend to be very conservative and all all these values because it went to the primary, but then when they go on, they'll get you know they'll kind of mellow out so that they could actually win the election. Well, I mean, that's pretty much what everybody's talking about. The, the hope is that whoever win uh, for people who um, want a change of office, the hope is that whoever wins the Republican nomination is mellow enough that they can carry with the independents. Because it's acknowledged it, whoever carries the independents is who's going to win the 2012 election across the board. No, it's, um, there and there's a lot of people. Who, uh, 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 however, there's the opposite thing that's going on with the whole Republican debates and the GOP and everything else. Is there's people going, but this is not a true conservative. We can't let this not conservative win the conservative nomination. I'm yeah. Like you, you can if you want to lose. <laughs> because no way in hell the independents are going to vote for a true conservative. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't even know where you stand on the on the politics spectrum side of things. You know, liberal, independent, conservative, do you lean more left, lean more right? Well, one of the things, when me and Bick get together and talk about this stuff, it winds up being really lopsided because he and I both, at least on the things we wind up talking about, tend to lean the same way. It's, I, I, I don't know, it's like, how are you hoping the elections shake up? Um... Well, as far as my political stance, uh, I'm generally democratic, and I'm generally uh, very liberal. You know, you know that political spectrum where you have those four squares. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that you do in the 
you know, I'm slots when I took that, I was actually so far down in the lower left square, which is the level square, that I was actually a little bit farther than Gandhi. Um, however, that said, I'm actually on the GOP side, because I don't really believe in, at least in the way that's happening now, I don't believe in these, in these Keynesian kind of economics thing. I don't like stimuluses. I think that it just pushes back the problem. You know, it'll just uh, pay this much and the economy will work, but it didn't really work. It's just you're pushing it back for maybe five years or 10 years or even 20 years if you give a large amount, enough amount of sum, but then it's going to catch up with you again. Um, so even though I believe, you know, so I, I, I believe that people should be free this way. I don't really believe the government should be controlling a lot. Uh, the things that I think the government should control have to do with protecting the human race itself, um, meaning stuff like armies, and I actually do think they should regulate things so that we don't, you know, destroy the planet, mainly stuff like that. The, the debate on that gets to be, is the regulation beneficial or harmful? I, I My personal assessment of the green movement is it's the most ungreen thing I've seen in the last 30 years. Because they tell me, follow this magical green. And I'm like, but it doesn't make any damn sense and it don't ever going to work. Follow the green! <laughs> so like, yeah, I, I would agree with that, that the current green movement. I mean, you know, there's so much talk about, you know, oh, people try to drive fuel-efficient cars. But, you know, you, know you, you drive a hybrid, it's still causing pollution. So, it, it, it's, the amount of pollution it causes, like, if everyone in the world were to drive a hybrid car instead of this, their normal car, the amount of pollution relative to how much the earth and the forest and stuff can regenerate that clean air and, and get out that CO2, it's still not enough. Well, um, and, and the CO2 thing is debatable, but you know, you want to use the energy as efficient as you want. You want to, like you say, minimize pollutants. I mean, the reality is, at the end of the day, it's all about trying to figure out to do something useful with the waste byproducts, whatever they are. That's where we got gasoline. It's a waste byproduct of making kerosene, for crying out loud. It's, you know, do something useful with the waste, figure out a way to address the effects of all waste byproducts. It's one of the reasons I took one look at the math on those things and said, screw a hybrid, a diesel makes more sense all around. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, what's sad is that uh, gasoline cars, pure gasoline, actually are a lot cleaner for the environment than pure electric cars for the reason that the way the majority of the world in, and the way the majority of uh, how the U.S. gets energy is by coal, which is many, many times less efficient than gasoline. Well, uh, th that's... It doesn't have to be, but the way the U.S. builds coal plants, it is. And, and ironically, you could have a real nice symbiotic relationship between a coal plant and uh, gasoline and, and dectane because you can make octane and dectane synthetically from the byproducts of a coal electric reactor if you capture them and process them using the reverse gas process of chemistry. Uh, and you know, get double use of the energy out of that. But you know, God forbid you talk about that process with green people, and I go, no, oh, no, no, coal bad. Like, yeah. it, <laughs> so that that mainly my idea that, that I believe that you know, as far as if it was in a liberal kind of view, if it was that that kind of society, I do believe strongly that the government should be out of most people's business. Blah blah blah. And what it does do, as far as in pe people's business, not just army and politics and stuff like that, it should be in consideration of the welfare of the human race as a whole, you know, to make sure we don't destroy ourselves and can continue going on and improve. You know, I do believe the government should also research stuff. Well, and what you're bringing up there is, I've noticed this 
great divide in the social media thing because I'm, you know, immediately labeled as an ultra conservative, even though I'm an independent and stuff. You know, they don't really want to talk with me. But it, it, there's conservative people. See me. There, there's there's liberal and there's liberal and there's Democrat and there's then there's liberals, or and, and not to be confused with libertarians. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and um, it, there's this like the base like no I'm a liberal not the liberals that are voted in those aren't true liberals there's uh, I'm like uh, okay wait a minute wait a minute it's like it's like you were just saying I mean so, some of the values you were saying are in terms of the political spectrum pretty conservative you're like you want minimal government you want government regulation but only at an absolute minimum you know. Yeah. And so, like, it's like, well, wait a minute, that's a conservative value. Wait just a damn minute. <laughs> it's like... Well, I feel like that's more of just a Republican value, because, like, I feel like conservative also has to do with protecting, you know, I don't know, conservative has to do with things like abortion and stuff like that, where, you know, oh, you want to protect this Christian society more. At least that's what it seems like. And well, that's... Republican is more about having a small government. Yeah, and, and honestly, that's what scares the bejesus for me personally about the conservatives. Every time I start talking about their good Christian society, I start wanting to run for the hills because I'm not a good Christian. <laughs> it's like, so, oh. and I, I, you know, I don't think that those two have to go together necessarily. Republican and conservative, you know, someone can believe in a small government while always hoping that people, you know, can you know, have the choice with you know, gay rights or whatever. In fact, they sh they go hand in hand more than you know you think. Yeah. Well, I mean, you brought up the homosexual thing. I, we screwed up in this country about a century ago when we got marriage and government together. We we screwed up <laughs> because at, at, when it was a religious institution, it wasn't an issue. Now it's a government institution, and we we're fucked. <laughs> it, it, I don't know how you untwist those. At, at this point, it's just, uh, I, I don't think the church should have to condone homosexuals if they don't want to, but that should have nothing to do whatever with the institution as marriage is defined by the law. Granted, those two should never have been put together to start with. That's what causes the whole problem. Um, so yeah, you think that that marriage should have been just a purely religious thing without really government? Yeah, you know, it, it, different religions will acknowledge different unions and so on and so forth. So you know that that's up for the different religions, whatever they think is the right path. Yeah, that 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 would have been good. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we you know we decided to make it a part of our law, and then we're screwed. <laughs> Uh, we covered we, we covered this. So, so, my official stance on abortion is I have the wrong genitalia to have an opinion. That is my official sta stance on abortion. It's your is is what? My official stance on abortion is I have the wrong genitalia to have an opinion. And the only which case the, the only case in which I change that is if the um, the point of debate is my own offspring. In which case, I reserve the right. But aside from that unique situation, I have the wrong genitalia to have an opinion. That's my official stance on that. I, I'm neither pro-life or pro-choice. I'm pro. I'm not a woman. I don't have. I'm not qualified. I see. Okay. So, what about in the case of your own kids? In the case of my own kids. That's a bridge that's going to have to be crossed if that situation ever comes up. Personally, I would prefer my own offspring not be aborted for anything other than a medical, uh, you know, other than I, I'm asking whoever I knocked up uh, to die. If, if she might die, I'm like, well, we'll have to sit down and talk about it. Yeah. But it, it's... Um, Aside from that, though, I'd prefer she not get rid of my kid. <laughs> yeah. But that's me. That's because I want to have kids. That's uh, and under the law, I have 
no rights whatsoever in that regard. She can do whatever her whatever she wants with or without me. I, I just have this paranoid thing. I'm going to piss her off, and she's going to go kill Junior just to get back at me. <laughs> I'm like, no, don't kill Junior just to fuck with me. Kill Junior because you want to kill Junior, please. <laughs> don't. <laughs> I can push the right buttons on people. But <laughs> You're not that good at picking someone. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so which of the GOP nominees do you think should get the nomination? I've been going first here. You tell me first, and why. <laughs> um... You're so, young, I, but I guess would be like Paul, but you probably don't think he can win. <laughs> I, I actually do think, you know, Obama won a lot because of the internet. The internet went crazy, you know, people who are my age just went crazy at rally, rallies everywhere. Everyone was talking about it. And so the same thing is happening for him. And he's getting a lot better statistics than... Um, he did last time. Now, I don't particularly believe in everything he says. Mainly, he doesn't really, he's completely libertarian. Yeah. I'm not. He doesn't believe in protecting the economy things because he doesn't believe, he thinks that that hurts the economy uh, to extend these regulations. Um, but what I'm looking at is what is the most uh, imminent threat and right now the economy collapsing is so much more of an imminent threat than or no 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 the yeah the economy is so much more of an, an imminent threat than uh, than you know the ecosystem so I think that a lot of what he wants to do you know for Mitt Romney doesn't I just had my disco ball go off. <laughs> if you didn't know I had it, I have a disco ball. We know now. <laughs> and it's also set off by clapping. <laughs> <laughs> the clock that didn't work to wake you up this morning? <laughs> not typical of politicians, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it's, most politicians are flip-flippers, and I don't like it because I don't think that makes a very good leader. You know, it's good to consider ideas, but, you know, the way Mitt Romney does it, it's just, it just sounds like he's, he, he just talks specifically to the populace to get what he wants as a vote, which doesn't really make a good leader because then he's going to just do whatever this, you know. And then New Green is whatever. I, I, these people, you know, when especially what scared me is during the GOP debates, they were talking, and it's, you know, you know some guy said, you know, we should be attacking all of America's potential enemies. You know, uh, nobody has this right to, you know, want to attack America, and we should be sending troops there. I'm like, what? First of all, there's no way we could afford that. <laughs> Second of all, we're not, you know, some country that's supposed to assassinate people or attack countries just overseas in the in the interest of national defense, you know. What it says is that we don't actually have to have an army, you know, the original founding fathers said we didn't have to have an army, but we do have to have a navy because we're supposed to be defense and we're supposed to be a little bit isolationist. In fact we're supposed to be very but it's okay to trade a little bit, especially you know, we're not gonna be able to be totally isolated with the internet. But we're not supposed to be doing that, and that should probably be stopped. But, yeah, I would say that that's the candidate I would most like right now. But, yeah, you know. What, what, what Paul or uh, Romney? Uh, Paul. Okay. <laughs> How about you? Go. Okay. You're right about 
about Paul being a true libertarian? And I've got in a debate with a lot of libertarians about this. They're like, I like everything he says, except, and most of them don't like his foreign policy. I'm like, well, that's a libertarian foreign policy. <laughs> it's like, that's why I'm not a libertarian, because I don't like that foreign policy either. That's what got us into World War II. <laughs> it's, you can't ignore these things indefinitely. Uh, there's, there, um, personally, and I've said this since the get-go, this isn't going to happen. He's not going to do it. Ron Paul would probably make a great vice president. I don't see him win, being able to win the nomination. He's not conservative enough to get the conservative vote to win the Republican primary. But I think he could transfer the Senate, and he could implement the policies he's after better if he partnered with a running mate that would support him. And Because the job of the vice president is to reign over the Senate. Yeah. So that would be a great place for Paul to wind up. The because the president was just to be there when the president dies and he didn't do it. Yeah, in which case he's a backup, but he's not plan A. Yeah, it's like, I mean, yeah, those literally are the two jobs of the vice president right over the Senate and be there in case something happens to the commander in chief. Yeah. It's, 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 it's actually a pretty light job, <laughs> aside from the fact that yeah. we've expanded right. government over. Yeah, that's what I've heard, that the vice president. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, he's a, an active vice president can be very effective in the legislature okay. because of the responsibilities of reigning over the Senate and so forth. You know, if a, if, if, a, if a vice president really does care and really is active, they can be very influential over there. In some cases, more so than the commander-in-chief, as long as the commander-in-chief isn't trying to stand in their way. Um... And I, I tend to agree with you on Romney. Uh, I've been defending, you know, the lynching him for being the rich, because that's... Yeah I'm, not, that, yeah, I'm not really against him for that. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, yeah. I, 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 uh, honestly, if I had to choose between the, the two forerunners of Romney and Newt, I'd probably lean to Newt. <laughs> Just because, uh, although Newt has his problems too. And yeah. You know, that thing, the thing Romney said, you know, what is it? Uh, one of the debates he's like that people who've been convicted of a federal crime shouldn't ever get to vote again. Well, yes. and I, constitutionally, we suspend your basically we all but suspend your citizenship when you're convicted of a felony. Uh, constitutionally, we had very few felonies. We have since in our war to be tough on crime. I mean, writing a bad check is a felony in more states than I care to count. Oh, I didn't balance my bank account right, and I wrote a $6 check on an account the bank closed. Felon! <laughs> because the bank account was closed. Usually it has to be over $1,500 to make it a felony, or over 2500 but there's a couple of places in the United States where if the bank gets overzealous and closes the account and those checks are floating around, you're technically guilty of felonies simply for being I'm like, no, that should not be a felony. That should be a misdemeanor, worst case scenario, community service. It's, and, and Honestly, I'd rather have Santorum win than you Do you think he can, though? No, I don't. But, you know, as far as the actual... First of all, Newt's never going to win against Obama. You know, people... Oh, uh, that, that goes to what I was talking about. It's like it, he's strong enough to win, to win the right. nomination, but can he really hold up in a national election? And that's the real thing. I mean, as far as a national election goes, that Ron Paul has a lot greater chance than Newt or Mint does against Obama because a lot of the people that, you know, that just don't like conservatives will still... Would still, vote for, Ron, would, would still vote for Ron Paul. I'm yeah. just not seeing how Ron Paul can win the Republican nomination. Yeah. Uh, if third party wouldn't work, because third parties... The third party would split the vote. Yeah. And then Obama wins anyways, you know, and that's... 
Yeah, you know, it, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's acknowledging the pragmatism of, of the situation. And honestly, the whole thing we're talking about here really outlines one of the flaws and the American um, representation system for the executive branch, and that we ha it has been completely constrained to a two-party system. Yeah, a third party can run, but the likelihood of them winning the presidential election is because they'll usually split the vote, yeah. and, and Paul would split the vote more than anybody. He, he, he forget what forget what Ross Perot did. Paul would really split the vote. Um, it. We, it would be nicer if we could actually have, that system isn't perfect either, but I wish we could find a hybrid system, because there's nothing in our Constitution inherently to forbid it. Yeah. Uh, it, it would require amending the process we've established over 200 years, which would be difficult. Yeah. Why do you like, um, sorry, better. Centaur, uh, I don't really like him, but as far as New Green Goods, you know, um, a lot of times during the debate, Santorum, you know, I, I like when he was responding to Mitt Romney that he was, he talked about, you know, well, you know, after they've served their time, after they've done this, you don't think that he, he it, I, I liked a lot of the questions he asked, he, you know, I, I thought that they were legitimate, uh, he was more moderate. I realize that he's super Christian on a lot of things, uh, you know, obviously. But we are talking about trying to get the conservative vote. I think we're a little loaded with super. <laughs> right. But as far as um, you know, some of his views besides that, closer to Ron Paul than Newt Gingrich or Mitt Romney, I think are. Not that I would like him at all as a president, but, yeah. Well, it's a, that, that goes back to the thing. It's like, it, it's... I, I'm I, honestly seeing the election this year being... I was impressed in him, with him than I thought during the debates, I'll say. The, yeah, I, I, I'm honestly thinking the election this year in the U.S. is going to be the American people as a whole. Probably about 60 to 70 percent of them going... Which one do I not like the least? <laughs> you know, it, it, it's... It, it, in some ways, that was an issue with the 2000... It, it, that's been an issue with the 2008, the 2004... It's like, it, and it's been getting progressively more that way. You know, 2008, the American people were filled with hope. You know, we're, we're going to hope. <laughs> Uh, I was never filled with hope. I was like, hey, I'm a pragmatist. Pull me on logic, not my heartstrings. And um, the reality was Barack Obama, why I knew, I knew he was going to win the election. You knew that the moment you heard the man speak. Um, he, I, I, he, he talked like Bill Clinton, and I was just, okay. <laughs> I'm not really sure where you actually stand, but I know you're going to follow winds wherever they go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, that's that. <laughs>